Some of the time I want to do is some sort of fancy tweening with these things called filters. And um, to be able to do that, I actually have to not only have a graphic, but have it sitting inside of a movie clip. So let me go ahead and make a movie clip. I'm hitting Control F8. Whoops. Control F8. A movie clip. Let's call this movie clip circle so, so I can distinguish it in my library. I'm going to drag in my graphic and I'm actually not going to do anything else at this point so I'm going to go back out to scene one. When I build my uh, my filtered tweens I'm going to use this movie clip circle instead of my graphic circle. So let's do that. Let's insert another new symbol, another movie clip. Let's, um, let's look at a drop shadow. Okay, drop shadow movie. All right. First thing I'm going to do is bring in my movie clip circle. Here it is. The next step I have to do is to apply a filter in the first place. If I go down to the property inspector, there's the second panel here called filters, and there are none right now, but I'm going to add one. I'm going to add a drop shadow, and I have some options. I can switch up the angle of this, and you can see I spin this around the shadow. We'll go around the shape. Let's put it right there. I can change the distance that which the shadow sits. I can change the level of blur and, and whatnot, and I can change the quality of it. I want to um, have this look like it's rising off the page, so I'm going to start the shadow real, at a really small distance from the object. I'm going to have it increase as we uh, quote unquote pull the object off the page. So now that I've got the filter set up, I'm going to go ahead and c make a copied keyframe on frame 20, let's F6, and on frame 40, let's F6 again. I do all of them at the same time so that when it goes back, it, it looks like it's returning to the same spot without me having to try to figure that out again. Now let me go into this middle keyframe and switch up what my filter looks like. So I'm going to, um, actually I'm going to make the object look bigger because we're trying to make it look like it's rising off the page. So let's do that. And then let's mess with the shadow. So I've got my selector tool, going back to here. Let's get the filter. I think that if you were raising something off a page, the shadow would appear to get farther out from the object and it would sort of look more blurry. If you can see this, if you just move your hand um, up and down over a piece of paper in bright light, and you'll see that that's what it looks like. All right, so I've got these two states set, the down close to the page and the out away from the page, and now all I have to do is right click here and create a motion tween. Let's go back in scene one and pull this guy on. This is the drop shadow movie I wanna pull over here. Let's test it out, control enter. There, it kind of looks like it's coming towards you and then falling back down. And so that is how you apply a filter. Just to give you a quick um, hint at what we have in the filter, we've got the ability to drop a shadow, to blur it, to glow it, and various other things. So that's what you have able to do with filters. Just remember that the thing you're animating has to already be a movie clip, even if it's just a movie clip of something that isn't moving.